Hi, Judy Shields here with the Hollywood Times. How Hello, are you? Judy. How, how are you? Been? I'm good. How about you? Good. Yeah, really yeah, good. Really, really good. excited, actually. It's just the penny is dropping, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We're about to launch this and can't wait. Jeez, that's... It's such a phenomenal series. I've seen so many wild animal series, and I'm telling you, you, you women rocked it. Thank, ah, you. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Faith, so I understand that you are the first Kenyan woman to to be in a series like this. What? How did you get involved? Oh, man. Um, so I attended this wildlife summit, um, the Jackson Wild Summit um, in Wyoming. And wow. while, yeah, while I was there, I had the fantastic opportunity to be interviewed by the Queen's team. And back then, nothing had been filmed. They were still chatting to people from countries where they, they would be filming some of the episodes. Um, so through that, they found out I'm Kenyan and I had an interview with Sophie. And that was the first that was the first conversation I had about the series. And to be honest, at the time, I didn't think this anything would come of it because I just thought um, these films never involve local filmmakers because it's usually, yeah, a Western crew will fly into Kenya and make the thing and go out. So mm-hmm. in having the conversation, I thought this is great that, you know, we're having this conversation, but this is probably the end of it. But I'm so glad I was so wrong. The beginning, the beginning for- of what will be a stellar yeah. career four years later here we are yes <laughs> I know I that's something four years what was it like for the two of you to be together and, and working on this series for that length of we, time you worked with elephants mostly right was it the elephants episode um we worked across the series actually in loads okay. of different things so um but we met on elephants mm-hmm. we met through elephants which is a pretty good introduction there. if you're going to meet anyone <laughs> uh we met in Amboseli underneath the shadow of Kilimanjaro yes and the wonderful thing is that Faith has family from very close by so knew um the researchers really really well so um we had this wonderful synergy where we met and I filmed elephants I filmed for 30 years I'm a DP Faith has filmed loads, but not quite at um, in this blue chip world of wildlife. And so there was this wonderful meeting and um, it's 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 been the best fun I've ever had. It was the first time I've ever worked with an all Kenyan film crew, um, which is an outrage. But exactly what we set out to do with on Queens was to turn everything on its head and actually make things and make better wildlife. Mm-hmm. yeah with, with that episode it just I mean it's like I said I've seen, seen many elephant stories but this one with the score the music and, music. and faith like when did you first touch your first elephant faith out <laughs> you shouldn't touch them Judy you don't <laughs> touch them <laughs> pet them nice <laughs> I wish I wish we could pet them no I mean we, we didn't yeah um we generally don't touch them unless you know it's something like the there's some medical intervention where yeah you rescue one or something yes and dot them they do um, occasionally use your vehicle to scratch on which is quite funny um oh, especially yeah. when you're trying to film yeah because it makes for a very unstable shot mm-hmm. yeah but but really the the connection was purely because i was spending so much time with um selenge the elephant that i i grew quite close to um, because she was one of the characters we wanted to film, uh, but she um, she was pregnant and we were hoping she would give birth and we would film it. Uh, so uh, p- one of my responsibilities was just to keep an eye on her. So if she went into labor, I'd ra- radio Sophie and say, Sophie, she's giving she didn't. birth. She didn't. She didn't. Um, in fact, none of them did. Actually. Yeah, they actually Aww. went off to give birth in private, which they should. But when you're spending so much time with them day in, day, and I'm talking the whole day, mm. you're you're just tracking this elephant, watching her eating, um, just go about her life. You just you can't help but fall in love, especially with Selenge. I don't want to give too much away, but the challenges she had and watching how she would overcome all these challenges and watching her interact with other herds who it's almost like they were aware of her condition because the way they loved on her um indicated that they knew something was amiss but she was generally on her own so I just ended up falling in love with this little girl oh yeah they they are very 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 special do you film uh elephants at night as well like other animals we um one of the um for me one of the most spectacular um 
and moments in Savannah Queens was we were meant to be filming lions predating on elephants. And it was something I was dreading because I have such huge love for elephants and it wasn't something I want to see, but also something you can't orchestrate. You know, nature writes the script and we go out there and record it. And what ended up happening was hyenas decided to go for our baby. And we were filming under a full moon with color cameras, which is extraordinary. So you get to see a scene that 10 years ago, there was no way you could have filmed this. And um, you see these mother elephants wa round wagoning around this little baby mm. and defending it from the hyenas. And it was a heart and mouth, but you're so busy trying to focus moment, but also having the tech that we can tell the full stories of these animals, which we did throughout the series, was um, very, very important to us. How are you able to hold those big lens cameras when you're filming? Ah, we have, um, I tell you what, we, um, I, it's Muscles. with difficulty, <laughs> yes, we were strong, but actually we have the most extraordinary, we had uh, red cameras uh, with uh, Canon lenses and we work with we work a lot from uh, in, in Bonobos, people were carrying, but we work with very heavy equipment um, that's very stable, that allows you to use a lens that will get you 25 times closer than your eyes so that we can actually be quite far away from an animal without disturbing it, which is really, really important to all of us. And um, so, yeah, it's just about having the right gear in the right place. Um, and yeah, being fit. You do mm. get great muscles. Yeah. I mean, they are so strong because uh, that camera rig is so heavy. You see um, Sophie just lifting this camera because every time the vehicle moves, she has to unmount okay. it. I've got a child. He's 23 now, but I still occasionally have to lift them up. Yeah. And, and seeing <laughs> Tanya in the Congo rainforest, just like walking, ca carrying the camera. And Tanya is actually five foot two. So she's, um, she's yeah, she's, but she's, she's a badass. Strong. It's a badass <laughs> business. Yeah. Well, you women did an amazing job. Faith. You just oh, not only just women, by the way, just want to shout out to we had a lot of incredible male allies who okay. realized the importance of having more women in this space and came and helped us raise and upskill yeah. these incredible women that we worked with. Great. And cheers to Queens. We can't wait till that comes out in March. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye, Bye. Bye. Hi, Judy Shields here with the Hollywood Times. How are you lovely women? Hey. Oh, we're fine. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for joining us today. Oh, my gosh. What an amazing series this is. My heart is still racing after seeing it a few days ago. I'm telling you. Thank you so much. Obviously. Did you manage to watch the whole thing? All of it. Whoa. <laughs> and I want to watch it again. <laughs> Justine and Aaron, let us know which ones did you work on since there was several of them. Yeah, um, well, I worked on the uh, episode one, uh, Hyenas and Lions, and on the Mountain Queens with Gelada Baboons and Ethiopian Wolves, and um, a uh, the uh, Tiny Queens with Leafcutter Ants, um, wow. a little bit of Elephants. Yes. Oh, and then I did Coastal Queens with Bears, uh, Elephant queens the savannah queens with elephants and then i did a tiny bit on um, hyenas and lions Aaron, what was it like to film those bears and how close can you actually get to them um it's it's really dependent on their tolerance you really don't want to disrupt their behavior so you're kind of letting them call the shots on that um, I've filmed bears for over eight years. It's you haven't you have guides with you. We had some really incredible guides with us, Brad Josephs, Teresa Whipple. Um, and you're just really trying to focus on reading their behavior and knowing how they're responding to your presence. Usually you're about as interesting as a seagull, to be honest. In the <laughs> in the Katmai National Park area, they do not care that you're there. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Justine, a couple of questions. Um Tell me what it's like to film at night and how do you film ants and insects? <laughs> <laughs> With difficulty. Um, um, at night, yeah, um, night work is um, a dark art, as they say. It's, a, it's, a, it's, um, it's tough, which is why a lot of people don't do it. But in my experience, I probably filmed the most revelatory and unfilmed before stories 
at night than I have way, way more than I have during the day. It's it's like a whole frontier of discovery. Um, so many times I've seen things that haven't been seen before <laughs> ever. Um, so, yeah, filming at night for Queen's. You know, we did get some really great moments. The lion and elephant, uh, sorry, lion and uh, hyena battle was, um, oh. you know, it was it was a big was a big moment and and couldn't have been filmed in any other way. Um, and and you you do find a lot with animals that they just they just get a lot more um, uh, lively or they're they're extreme with their with their behaviors at night. You know, because they especially animals like that. They they are um, quite act, you know, very active at night. Um, so so you you'll see you'll see that sort of heightened behaviour that you probably wouldn't see so easily during the day. That was award winning footage. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still nervous about it <laughs> for both of you. Uh, and the insects the uh, you ask about <laughs> insects, yeah, um, you know that's another whole skill set. And um, there was a team. We had a mentee, Gail Kakula. She um, she uh, sort of field orchestrated the uh, sequence with the leafcutter ants, um, tracking along with them as they come down the tree and they go down into their nest. And that was working with an engineer called uh, Mohan Sandhu, who had developed a, a big motion control rig that could be programmed to follow these tiny tiny ants um so yeah really amazing technology and uh you know, it, it um it just sort of shows them and you know it, like you're in their world so it shows them in a really different way so the, how did the two of you get involved with the queens series so i was interviewed as a mentee back in 2019 at the jackson wild film festival um i had an interview be with Vanessa and Sophie Darlington. I had to show them my rushes because I didn't have a show reel at that point. I had just gotten back from a six month passion project shoot. Um, and they were looking for people who had the potential to become DPs if they had ex access to the kit and the knowledge from people like Justine. Yeah, and me, um, I, yeah, I was asked um, by Vanessa to come on board with Sophie Darlington right, right at the beginning. Um, before the, um, the the series had even got off the ground. And uh, in fact, it was just, it hadn't even got the final go ahead from National Geographic. Um, and I remember her excitingly ringing us and saying, it's being greenlit, it's going, it's happening. <laughs> and uh, so we came on board really early on to look at who could be mentored through the series and, and you know, just build up that whole team. Um, so yeah, it was exciting at the start. And I, I, you know, personally, I hadn't ever been involved in that side before, oh. um, you know, look, well, and also it was uh, not only that, but it was also, I don't think anyone would be involved in, 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 in something like this before, because it, it was, it was completely new. <laughs> so yeah, we didn't quite know what, what it was going to be at the beginning. Yes. You guys knocked it out of the park. It, it was amazing. Uh, Jan, I heard mm. you've helped over a hundred, several hundred women around the world. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I think one of the best things you can do when you have the gift of receiving knowledge from people like Justine and Sophie and our other mentors, Johnny Rogers, Tom Walker, is to continue to pass it down because I don't think it's, we can't just have two people coming in or three people coming in. We need to build a foundation for younger girls and younger aspiring filmmakers. So we have built a community. We have free Skillshare classes. Um it's all about, you know, passing it on, lifting as you climb. Thank you once again for being with us. It's an amazing series. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you, Thank you very much. Glad you liked it. Hi, Judy. Great. Hi. <laughs> Great. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to have some few questions here for you ladies. We'll start out with uh, Morgan. Morgan, the songs chosen fit so well used in this episode as well as the score. Tell us about the music. Um, well, I can't speak to the songs that were placed from other artists, although I know that that was a big part of, you know, Chloe's process. Um, but uh, the score, I think the intention was to have it feel fresh and to have it feel um, like it was taking, you know, um, I would say hints from the past of the genre within the, the scope of music that's been created. Um, and also, uh, I think I was empowered to kind of inject 
this score with um, some modern elements. Oh, great answer. Jen, um, as an explorer, what role did you have in this series, Queens? Uh, I photographed the cover story on Spotted Hyenas for National Geographic magazine that's linked to the series. What, what an amazing series this is for you women. What was it like being part of this uh, as an all woman, you know, team? You, you girls look beautiful, by the way. Oh, Thank thanks. You. <laughs> we got gussied up for everybody today. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me personally, uh, it, the sense of camaraderie, support, collaborative challenge, and trust it, it has been it's kind of unparalleled. It's one, it's one of the most um, fluid and understanding teams I've ever worked with. And it's also allowed, I think, me personally to have uh, impetus to create some of the best work possible with that support. Wow. Jen? I was working independently, so I unfortunately didn't have the chance to work with the filmmakers. Well, Thanks for answering that one. Um, well, Jan, uh, what was like the first wild animal, you know, you got to cover and what you do? Yeah. So I actually have a background in science. I, um, I started out as an ecologist and um, sort of only within the last five years have been doing storytelling full time. Um, the first animal that I worked with, I guess, was meerkats. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. That must have been interesting, huh? <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So Morgan, um, you know, how many hours does it take to, you know, for an episode to include the school? <laughs> I, got I don't even it. know how to answer that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, look, the nature of this genre is that, and you know, if there's 60 minutes of music, there's going to be 59, uh, 60 minutes of footage, there's going to be like 59 minutes of music. It's just kind of like wall to wall to wall. Um, just because the, the, the music is, really kind of within the fabric of the SFX and the editing, the voiceover, the, the storytelling as a whole. So I, let's just say a lot, a lot of hours, a lot of hours. <laughs> it's a lot of music. I mean, you think about some albums aren't even an hour long and that takes people years to do. <laughs> so <laughs> just to put that into perspective. I know it's like the time frame. I can't imagine as I, as I was watching them, it's like sometimes I have to stop and then rewind it and listen to the music, you know, oh, cool. That's because a... it's just, like I said, uh, <laughs> it all was just done so beautifully. And I just wondered how long it took someone like you to do it. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's a great compliment. <laughs> uh, so Jen, tell us a little bit about, you know, your, your career and what led you to National Geographic. Sure. I got my first National Geographic grant in 2014 for the first year of my PhD research. And, uh, from there, I just started meeting National Geographic photographers and editors and started to see a path forward for becoming a storyteller. And so the past 10 or 12 years, I've spent mostly in Africa working on various wildlife species, both as a scientist and a storyteller. And I really feel like this um, this hyena story has been sort of the culmination of all of that. Yeah, th those hyenas, there's there were something to watch. It's like, oh, sometimes I had to close my eyes with those animals. <laughs> <laughs> There's something. So Morgan, when did uh, you first discover your musical talent? Oh gosh, I I don't know that it's a discovery. I think it's just there. <laughs> it's like you can't avoid it. <laughs> um, and and I don't know that that's like a um, a talent thing. I think it's just a desire thing. I just want to make music. So um, it, I can't help it. I suppose it's ever since I was a very very young child. Yeah. Do you, what instruments? Do you play any instruments yourself? Yeah, I, I, I grew up playing a classical piano. Um, mm -hmm. I played with the orchestra in Peru at one point, and, and I took up the cello um, as, a, as a teenager. And I was in the chorus of the San Francisco Opera, and I've, I've kind of done every iteration of, of theater and, and, and music in the live setting and the classical world, and then ended up in a band for my 20s, and here I am now. Great. Do you have any last words for our viewers about this series, Queens, that you worked on? I just think it's incredibly special, and I really, really hope that people take the time to to watch it and, and enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed working on it. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us today, both of you. It was an amazing series, and I can't wait to watch it again. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much.